The value of fuel burn duration is measured in crankshaft degrees and position, right? That sounds like a head full, doesn't it? But it's really simple. And it's the fundamentals. So this is actually a part B to the last video that we did where we were talking about the fast burn fuels like uh, vaporized gasoline and hydrogen and regular gasoline. And we were talking about burn duration and the effect it has on an engine. And needless to say, the longer, you, the longer duration, the longer you can keep that flame front moving, the pressure pulse actually acting on the piston, the better it is. But there's a little bit more to it than that. So before we get into any of that, we have to define some terms. And well, let's start off with a contradiction. So if I says, what's the opposite of top dead center? You would say bottom dead center. But that's not the truth. Top dead center and bottom dead center mirror each other. They're not really opposites. At both of those positions, the piston is stationary. The opposite of top dead center is 90 degrees past top dead center, or half stroke. So, at top dead center, the piston is completely stationary. If you're dealing with a typical engine like we all are, where you've got a crankshaft, you've got bores that are centered on the crankshaft, and you've got a pin that's centered on the piston, at top dead center, everything is stacked up straight. And you could actually take the weight of the planet and put it on top of the piston, but it has zero rotational effect on the crankshaft because it's all stacked up straight. It's not until a couple of degrees after top dead where the crankshaft is out of line now and the rod starts to lean a little bit that the downward push has any effect on the crankshaft rotation. The opposite at 90 is the piston is at maximum velocity. It's as fast as it's going to go. The rod is leaned over as far as it'll go and the crankshaft arm is out as far as it'll go. So it has maximum leverage. So at 90, you, any force acting on the top of the piston has the greatest effect on the rotational effort put into the crankshaft and therefore power transferred to the drivetrain. So when you talk about engines that make real horsepower, so regular engines, pedestrian engines, three, four, 500 horsepower, they're using, as we talked about in that last video, and I don't want to rehash that whole video. If you want to watch that, we'll put a link to it at the end of this one. They're all making power in the zone between 15 degrees past top dead center and 45 degrees. That's where the pressure pulse is the greatest, and then beyond that, the piston is being driven by expanding gases and momentum for the rest of the trip. But when you start extending the duration of burn, and we all know, obviously, that the longer the fuel burns, the more power it's going to make. But what people leave out of the equation, the fundamental that's missing here, is that every degree of crankshaft rotation past 45 has an exponential effect on the amount of power that's actually transferred through the drivetrain. And that's because as the piston is leaning over, as the rod is leaning over and the piston's coming down, it's got maximum leverage on the crank arm. So every degree that you can extend that burn has an exponential effect on power output. And that's how engines, you see, regular engine, you know, the one in your street car, you're making 300, 400, 500 horsepower, and you look at these guys that are making 1,500, 2,500, 6,000 and more horsepower, and you say, well, how are they doing that? Well, it all has to do with how many degrees past that 45, closest to the 90, that they've got an active pressure pulse. And it's generally done through fuels. You know, oxygenated gasoline, nitrous oxide, supercharging and turbocharging both force enough volume into the chamber of fuel and air to create a long enough duration burn to get you into that, close to that 90. But that's where the power is made. It's difficult to make power there, because remember now, the piston, as it comes closer to 90, it, the rate of acceleration increases, which means that the flame front has to catch, and we talked about this in the last video, the flame front is, is dealing with ever-expanding combustion chamber, and it has to chase the piston down. And that's why it takes such a volatile fuel to make power down in that range. But to illustrate the difference in piston speed, Watch this one, which is at mid-stroke, and this one, which is at top dead, and look at the difference in movement between them. 
We're going from about 10 before to about 10 after. But look how far the piston next to it is moving in relation because the piston next to it is attached to the crank arm that's at an angle. So this piston right here in this position is exerting maximum effort. This piston in this position is exerting zero effort. So you can break the power stroke down to four areas. Right? This is how I've always considered it. So and they're 45 degree, measured in crankshaft rotation, they're 45 degree zones. The first 45 degrees is what I would call the utilitarian zone. Right? It's like if the cylinder is going to make any power at all, it has to do it there. It has no choice, otherwise it's a dead cylinder. But from zero to about 45 past top dead center, that's where everything's got to make some power to operate. When you go from 45 to 90, now remember the piston is speeding up at this point and the rod is leaning out more and the crank arm is, is receiving maximum leverage at this point. From 45 to 90, that's the happy, happy fun zone. Anything you can do to increase the duration of burn into that 45 to 90 degrees zone is going to make you basically free horsepower, or meaning uh, horsepower without a penalty, because you're not asking the engine to do anything it wasn't designed to do. There's no detriment to making power in that later zone. And the further you go into that zone, the further you go to 90, and 90 is the magic number now, the more usable power you're going to actually put down and the less damaging effect there will be to the overall assembly. Now you go from 90 to 45 before bottom dead center. That's the danger zone. Okay. Pistons at 90. Now you've filled this thing with some mixture, some fuel that's got an active flame front that's still pushing on the piston at 90. Once you get to 91 past, now the piston is starting to slow down. The crankshaft is coming around and so its leverage is diminishing. At the same time, the piston is decelerating. So now you're, you're running into greater resistance at the crankshaft and greater resistance at the head of the piston. The piston's wanting to slow down, but an active flame front is still wanting to push against it. The further you go into that danger zone, every degree you, you have that active flame front working against the piston in that danger zone is a degree closer to bottom hole detonation. So bottom hole detonation is a bitch. If you've ever seen, like you ever see the, uh, like the pulling trucks when they explode and you know, just the whole, it'll just launch the whole top half of the motor clear off the, the truck and all that's left in the chassis is like the, the bottom of the block and the crankshaft, that's bottom hole detonation. It didn't get evacuated quickly enough. There was enough of an active, full-bodied, full-fueled flame front, meaning the resistance of a piston before the exhaust valve can open, that it detonated. And when it detonates, it has no choice. When an engine detonates at the top, it'll jack the head studs out, it'll blow the head gasket out, it'll do stuff like that. When they detonate at the bottom of the stroke, past 90 degrees, that's when you get these crazy violent explosions because it just wants to rip the block in half at the main saddles, you know, the area between the main saddles and the cam. So when you go past 90, when you start, when you're like, let's shake hands with danger and make power past 90, you have to make sure that you have a wet enough charge. And usually at this point, you're dealing with alcohol or nitromethane. So you pump a ton of liquid in there to keep a cool charge. Basically with nitro, alcohol to some extent, but mostly nitro, only a very small percentage of the fuel is actually burned. There's enough in the chamber to create a thermal barrier around everything else. And that keeps them from detonating once you start getting into that cycle. So between 90 and 45 before bottom dead center is a danger zone and the every degree you go past Every crankshaft degree you go past 90, you come closer and closer to hurting your motor. Then the bottom 45 is the blowdown zone. At that point, the exhaust valve is opening and all of that pressure is being evacuated. So exactly how much power is made, how critical 
When you're dealing with a high volume fuel, when, you, when you're putting, let's say, nitromethane or even like nitrous oxide, if you can get enough of it in there, how critical is that power zone down there towards the bottom? Well, back in the early days of nitro raising, in the era between the time that they would smoke the tires a whole quarter mile and then they had clutch management, so like into the 1980s, one of the main tuning aspects of those cars was to adjust the valve lash, the exhaust valve lash, to either tame the car down or make more power. You would make more power at the risk of heavy detonation. So what you would do is, um, let's say the car burned the tires off and you want to take 100, 200 horsepower away from it without messing around with nitro or the mag. What you would do at that point is close down the exhaust lash and it would open the exhaust valve a degree or two sooner in the crankshaft rotation, bleed off that cylinder pressure that much sooner, and it was worth 100 or 200 horsepower just closing down the valve lash a little bit, going from like a 26,000 slash to like a 18,000 slash. And you would do the opposite if you wanted to get a little extra power. You know, you would open the lash and delay the exhaust valve opening point and that gets you an extra 100 or 200 horsepower. That's how critical it is. When you get into like high horsepower engines with extremely long duration burns, once you get down there into that zone, that 90 degree zone, crazy power to be had. That's the happy zone. That's the fun zone. And like I said, if you, if you push it too hard, you get too hard of a mixture, too dry of a mixture, or too too dry of a mixture, too, uh, too volatile a mixture, without enough liquid cushioning to cool, yeah, you can cr crazy problems down there. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Basic engine fundamentals. The closer you can get that pressure pulse to 90, keep the piston directly powered to 90, the more power you make, and it's exponential. Every single degree is, is worth more and more horsepower. And then past 90, you're starting to get into some crazy zones there. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.